let's talk about what's happening, what C60 is actually doing at the mitochondrial level. Well, first of all, let's talk about mitochondria. And, and in, you know, if you, there are certain cell types in your body which have a lot of mitochondria. The brain perhaps has the highest level of mitochondria. It's, you know, 2% of your body weight uses 20% of the energy. I mean, I think half, it's, half the physical mass of most, most nerve cells is literally mitochondria. So, you know, because they use so much energy, the mitochondria, the organelles in our cells, which make the energy. And so uh, one of the things that C60 do is C60 is characterized as an SOD catalase mimic in dealing with the oxidative radical superoxide. And, you know, your little mitochondria are, are, you know, they're furnaces. And one of the side, you know, furnaces make pollution. And one of the side effects is superoxide is superoxide. And uh, usually, as you know, especially when we're younger, we have our, our larger cells make an enzyme superoxide dismutase and catalase. And those two work together basically to reduce superoxide, which is an oxygen with an extra electron, down to water and an oxygen. So basically, SOD turns it into hydrogen peroxide. Then, uh, then the, then the uh, catalase turns the hydrogen peroxide into water and an oxygen. And, uh, and, and, it, and usually, you know, we're all young, that works great. But as we get older, our SOD levels go down and sometimes catalase levels down. So we can't uh, process that, that superoxide as much and it can leak out and, uh, and cause damage. And, you know, what, what can, you know, what are those oxidative radicals SOD could do? I mean, you can cross-link proteins, so they don't work. You can uh, damage cell membranes so things leak in or leak out that shouldn't. And of course, you can damage RNA and DNA chemistry. And another thing that SOD or superox uh, superoxide makes, it'll combine with uh, nitrous oxide, which is another common oxidative radical in our cells, and make uh, peroxynitrite, which is really stable. And that can kind of float even out of your cells and it can go a long distance before it could cause damage. And they think DOMS, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness, has a lot to do with uh, peroxynitrite production, especially when you're doing like that massive amount of exercise. So when you take C60, C60 passes the blood, it passes the gut barrier, passes the blood brain barrier. It's up, up taken into the cells by endocytosis, then into the mitochondria by endocytosis, where it works is that SOD catalase mimic. And so what happens is now your mit mitochondria, because they now have a SOD, essentially SOD catalase back, they can turn their their production levels back up. So now you have more ATP, which is the energy molecule of the cell. And when you have more energy molecules, well, then your cell can heal itself, basically. And, and that appears to be what happened with, because uh, the retina, by the way, for back, the retina is part of the brain. It's nerve yeah. cells. It's basically an extension Super of the brain. Super dense in mitochondria. And, and so that's, which is interesting, because when people take C60, the first thing you notice is like better mental clarity, like the brain fog goes away, you have better mental focus. And of course, that would be associated with uh, improved mitochondria function. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, what's different about C60 versus your typical antioxidants? Like if somebody's taking vitamin C, lutein, zeaxanthin, a lot of things that you talked about, what's different about C60 compared to many of these other antioxidants that people are consuming in their diet as well as in supplements? Well, one of the things is C60 only reacts with two oxidative radicals. One is the superoxide I mentioned. The other is the hydroxyl ion. And that's basically a water molecule that has the proton knocked off. And those are the two most damaging oxidative radicals in the body. And the body doesn't use them as signaling molecules. Okay, that's really important. And that's all C60 uh, it does, inter interacts with. Basically, it turns superoxide back into an oxygen and turns the hydroxyl ion back into a water. And, uh, and what, what it doesn't do, C60 does not inter interfere or interact with nitrogen oxide, which that's a vasodilator, vasoconstrictor, depending on the levels. It's super critical to health. C60 doesn't interfere. And C60 doesn't interfere with any of the other sig body's signaling molecules, many of them which are oxidative radicals. Now, if you're taking vitamin C or vitamin E or something, or zoanthins, if you take too much of them, they uh, they actually start interfering with a lot of the body's signaling molecules, uh, you know, signaling molecules, which like nitrogen oxide and and some others based around sulfur and iron and zinc, and then you get decreased performance or decreased you know effectiveness because you now you're actually interfering with the body's signaling molecule structures and that you know that's obviously caused a problem. I mean they've actually done a meta study. You can go online and find it, but they they did you know they took all these studies about athletes using vitamin C and vitamin E to see if it can actually increase athletic performance. And they found no, because as you got more above a certain level, 
then you just get decreased performance. So, you know, the basic recommendation was eat a healthy diet and you'll have enough for that. But with C60, it doesn't. It only interferes with superoxide and the, and the hydroxyl ion. So C60 is actually the only antioxidant that can increase athletic performance. So in a sense, there's good oxidative stress and bad oxidative stress. Yeah. Typically in the natural health world, we kind of lump oxidative stress all in the bad realm, but that's actually, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's an immature way of viewing it. We really need to understand it's good and bad, right? We need a certain amount of it. And that actually helps our body produce ex endogenous antioxidants, like our own glutathione levels and things like that. And so that's one of the reasons why exercise can be so beneficial, creates resiliency, because we produce all these all this oxidative stress, but then we adapt and we get better at producing our own endogenous antioxidants. And so taking too many antioxidants can be really problematic. But C60, what it does is it works on the bad oxidative stress, the kind of oxidative stress we want to reduce without affecting the good oxidative stress that creates adaptation in our, in our system. Yeah, that's correct. And like, for instance, there's basically four big ox antioxidants that your body really is critical to mitochondria function. And, and, that, and that's, of course, one of them is CoQ10. Yeah. And you can supplement for that. And you probably should, especially if you're older. Mm -hmm. The second is glutathione. Now, we couldn't used to be able to supplement for glutathione, but they actually have some pretty good, uh, some pretty good like uh, liposomic, the, the, the yeah, liposomal, yeah. liposomal, and they My have cell, some, liposomal, yep. Yeah, they have some that absorb through the gum tissues and stuff, mm -hmm. and a few others, uh, patch types that seem to be doing actually rather well. Do they get to the places they need? I don't sure. But one of the things that C60 does, C60 takes care of the hydroxyl ion which is yeah. usually dealt with by the glutathione uh, antioxidant. But of course, glutathione has a dozen jobs. That's just one job that glutathione, so, and that's in fact what hydroxyl ions, what radiation produces mostly, because your body is 70% water, so it's mm -hmm. not in protons off. So, uh, so kind of what, if you take C60, it'll take that one specific job of glutathione. So what glutathione you have can go do the other dozen important jobs that it has. But until C60 came along, there was no way to produce SOD or catalase. There was, if, you know, if you had low SOD levels, catalase levels, because those are endogenous, they're made within the cells, and there actually isn't any mechanism to uh, to get SOD inside of the cells. There's some exome uh, transportation systems, but we really haven't developed exomes that can pass the gut barrier or be injected. You know, so that just, there just wasn't any way to get to supplement for SOD. So basically we're solely dependent on our own endogenous production of superoxide dismutase to quench that superoxide molecule until C60 came along. Yeah, and C60 is, is a mimic. It mimics, it does the job of SOD and catalase in one mm. step. Okay. And there's, back in the early earth, there was actually geologic deposits of C60 around. And uh, if you were in a really, really, really cold environment, you know, sub-zero, very C60 would, would actually fit in the, the groove of the RNA molecule, the side groove of the DNA molecule. So it's suspected that C60 might have been the original antioxidant of life, hmm. which is why it doesn't interfere with any of the body's signaling molecules and only deals with superoxide and the hydroxyl ion, which the body doesn't use as signaling molecules. And it does the job of, you know, SOD and catalase in one shot. That's just a, a speculation you know, based on some evidence, but uh, it'll take some scientific. Uh, that's why. That's why you call it the Swiss Army knife, right? The Swiss yeah. Army knife of antioxidants. And so, and that's the key. And now, but it also gets rid of a lot of inflammation in, throughout the body. And uh, that's uh, one of the things. Like for instance, that's it's well known for that. They did a, a study with rabbits, and they gave the rabbits arthritis, and uh, then they injected C60 into the arthritic joints. And yes, lo and behold you know, swelling went down. That's not surprising. Because one of the things is when you have inflammation, usually you have you have cells being damaged. Uh, when they're being damaged, they give off, you know, superoxide, hydroxyl ions are very common in that. That causes more damage, you know, microphages come in, they set out cytokines, and then they bring in the neurofills. And especially with autoimmune diseases and stuff like that, neurofills are these are these uh, white blood cell types, and they actually use neurofills or neutrophils? Are you talking about neutrophils? neutrophils or, sorry, yeah, neutrophils. Yeah, yeah. yeah neutrophils. Yeah. Sorry, get that right. Neutrophils, and they actually use superoxide atoms or molecules as as uh, as a machine gun bullets to kind of take out bacteria. But if it's uh, you know they're just kind of spraying around, you got collateral damage. So if you take C60, it would suppress that uh, that excess damage, and of course inflammation goes down. And yeah. uh, but when they actually open the the uh, uh, opened up the uh, the the joints. They found the cartilage uh, 
increased. The cartilage had regrown, which was really surprising. And from that, it went to more research, and they discovered that C60 actually increases stem cell levels in people. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then that, and then how did that happen? See, C60 is young, right? We're just learning yeah. about these. And so one study leads to another, which leads to another. And basically, they found that we have a lot of things called senescent cells in our body. Right. And these are basically zombie cells. Usually, it's because their DNA is damaged. They can't reproduce. And usually there's mechanism apoptosis, ophagy, that you know that basically wipes out these senescent cells, but that, that doesn't always happen. A lot of these cells don't want to die. So they go into this senescent thing is which in which they basically go into the fermentation mode. They stop producing SOD, catalase, glutathione, uh, CoQ10, and other antioxidants. And so even the mitochondria have to go into fermentation mode, which is kind of like a bacteria mode. It's like a primitive mode and so like and it's like 1 20th as efficient as the oxygen burning krebs cycle and but the thing is their fermentation right we all know what does fermentation do well fermentation makes alcohols and all kinds of other nasties which then start damaging the cells around them and the gen body in general and so one of the things when you take c60 c60 is uptaken by those senescent cells it gets into the mitochondria and it restarts the mitochondria back into the Krebs cycle, the making the ATP and all that. Mm. Well, you know, that's all well and good, but the mitochondria have their own DNA and they have a constant communication with the, the larger cells nucleus. You know, it's, it's part of it. There is symbiosis going on. And when the, uh, the mitochondria will send out messages to the nuclear DNA, and if it's a senescent cell, they're not going to get the right answer back. And the mitochondria will actually blow themselves up and cause apoptosis which is a form of programmed cell death. And the cell breaks down into apoptotic bodies, which are non-inflammatory, by the way, and then the phagocytes come and clean them up. And, uh, and so that's what appears to happen is that, you know, as people take C60, it kills off all these senescent cells. Now your cell type or tissue doesn't have as many cells as it needs. So it sends out messages, hey, we need more stem cells. And so pretty soon you've got just really, really high levels of stem cells. So a lot of the same benefits of fasting, when we fast or insulin goes down, the body starts going into healing and repair, triggers uh, autophagy. And as we're going through on autophagy, there are certain cells that are so far beyond, you know, like autophagy is trying to clean up cells so we can basically recycle yeah. the intracellular components so we can reprogram those cells. But if the cell is so far gone, like you were talking about, sends the apoptotic signals so that the cell gets rid of itself and then we need to replace those cells. So that's when these stem cells start to rise. So basically C60 is, you're getting a lot of the same benefits of fasting when you're also taking the C60. 